Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I thought I would show you what I made. <laughs> um, I thought I would try to make a sketchbook that doesn't require any binding. Now, I've done some binding before in the past. Um, here is stab binding I did with embroidery floss. I added some beads for fun. Um, this is part of Strathmore's toned tan paper, and I just used it uh, as the cover <laughs> and added a piece of like a sheet protector. And then these are all the animals I drew in the month of August a couple years ago. I can link this sketchbook tour, but I did try binding. So stab binding is pretty quick. It's not too bad. Um, I tried the Copic binding, Coptic binding. And this is like a watercolor cover with Astro Brights on the inside. This is something I gave my daughter. And you can see I did not pull out enough of the wax thread, so I had to keep adding more. I did not enjoy this binding so much. Um, it's very precise. I am not precise. I am very slapdash all the way 100%. So this was a lot of stitching and sewing of paper. <laughs> and in the end, my hands kind of hurt. So Coptic isn't my favorite. I have a video for this one. Um, this is called a piano hinge binding. And these are some <laughs> kebab skewers from our kitchen. And I can link the video if you want to see how I did this. It was fairly easy. And again, this doesn't require stitching, but it does require skewers. Now this is a uh, paper from my Strathmore 500 series roll that's mixed media. So I thought I would take that paper and watercolor it for a base and make a sketchbook. Now I am going to link all the video parts. Um, basically what I do is I get the roll and I cut it. <laughs> <laughs> to a huge size and a larger size you have the bigger your sketchbook is going to be um, you could totally make this sketchbook with like a sheet of regular paper if you want to and it's just cutting and then folding like accordion style um, I also take some watercolors. I take the Mary Moo Blue, uh, Potter's Pink, and I have the Schmincke Hodrum Aquel. I'm using the French Ultramarine because it's red-based versus the other Ultramarine, which is blue-based, and that looks really nice with the Potter's Pink. And I splash Jackson Pollock style-ish on both sides of the page.
and wait for it to dry. I have a hair dryer that I used um, <laughs> for a bulk of the drying because it isn't very warm out. The sun's not even shining today. Oh, July. <laughs> July in the forest. So with that, drying times take longer. So from start to finish, I think this whole project took about five hours, but that's just because I let some of it naturally dry. And then I tried to trim it as best as possible. And then began the cutting and the folding. Okay, so I get that that time lapse was super fast, but I was showing huge portions of myself and a kid walked through and privacy. So this is going to be the section where you see the actual template. So this is the paper and you're going to do halves widthwise. And then again, you're going to come up to meet that halfway point line. I apologize for the cars. It's the weekend. Sometimes folks are loud. So you can see that this has been folded with white is half and half. Okay? You see the four folds. Now you're going to do it lengthwise. Fold it in half. These are going to be your guides for where you cut. And then you're going to fold in half again to the halfway point of the lengthwise on both sides. So what you should be left with is 16 squares. And how you cut this, because it's going to be four across, you're going to pick a side and you're going to cut all the way to the width line of the single square. Here, let me draw. You're going to cut all the way to here. This is the line. And then you're going to cut you're going to cut this direction. And then you're going to cut this direction. This is where you stop. This is where you stop. And then you're going to go this way. And this is where you stop. And then you're going to go this way. And this is where you stop. Okay. I'm using scissors. Um, you could exacto. You want to go opposite direction. And again, you're going to the last square and then you stop at that fold line. Okay? So it sort of looks like this. Hopefully this template will be a little bit more clear cut. Okay? So now it should look like this. An M or a W but it's all connected. And this is where you start to fold. You just accordion fold it back and forth. And then you fold it up to go to the next line and you keep accordion folding. Keep accordion folding. And then you fold up. You keep accordion folding back and forth. Up. 
accordion folding. Okay, so if you have in the United States, a standard size piece of paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. This would be your sketchbook using that size piece of paper. So I hope this little demo that was slowed down in real time helped. So what's left is this sketchbook. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how this works. It's all accordion folded. I think I folded it correctly. I'm not sure if I folded it right. I'm gonna have to figure out this sketchbook and I think it's reversible. So this is one side of it. And then the other side looks like this. Um, I would say if you're going to do this project, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to make a sketchbook that you don't have to bind. Um, you don't have to have a roll of paper to do this. You could buy a single sheet. They sell large sheets of different types of art paper at different art supply stores and craft stores. You could try poster board. You could try any paper you want. I mean, if you want to do just a single standard sheet of paper, just know that your sketchbook is going to end up being... <laughs> It's going to be teeny, which is fine. You could totally work on miniatures and working on like one inch by one inch illustrations, which I've done that before. Um, I did one inch by one inch birds at some point in my life. I think that was 2018. Anyway, so this is my, <laughs> this is my sketchbook. Um, if you're thinking about doing this in mass product, like to mass produce, I would say a roll of paper is probably the most affordable that way. Um, using artist grade watercolors probably isn't the most affordable. Um, let me show you what I have left of the tubes. Okay, so you can see it used up a chunk. I still have a bunch left. I'm just saying that if you wanted to make like a dozen of these, Artist grade watercolors probably isn't the most cost effective, especially if you're on a budget or a limited income and you want to do something like this. Anyway, so I thought I would, I would open the page and draw on it. Oh, I love it so much. It's so strange. Um, I'm going to try a brush pen, I think. I would like to make another one of these at some point and use... I have a Prussian green that's really weird. Prussian green in the sun, if you're familiar with light fast stuff, it can fade in the sun, a portion of it does. And then if you put it back out of the sun, the fact that the coloring comes back, Prussian green is very bizarre, but I love it. So if I'm going to make a Prussian green one, I think I'll do gold gouache on top of it. But I think for this one, I'm just gonna use a Pentel brush pen in black. Cause I think that's the strongest value against these sort of neutral tones. But I have a little bit of the edges that I trimmed. And I wanna make sure that when I go to do this, that the ink doesn't lift the watercolor because the ink's pretty wet. So I wanna see if this makes a mess of it. And I think it's gonna be okay. Again, this is 100% cotton paper. So it's gonna perform fairly well. Oh, here's another section I can try. Oh yeah, that looks fine. Okay, that's gonna work. Always provide yourself a little bit of a tester piece if you can. Okay. So, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do for the cover, so I'm gonna skip the cover for right now. And I think I'm just gonna try a bit of a portrait and see how this looks. Again, um, <laughs> I should probably pre-sketch stuff, but I just, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes it's just fun to be slapdash and kind of wild with it and be messy and enjoy the things you're doing. I don't know. So we're gonna see if this works. It's so far so golden, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, I've never made one of these. 
Um, I like I like the folding. Folding's easy. The trimming. Um, again, I made a rather large one, so floor space is kind of essential for things like that. You'll have to think about that if you go really, really large, especially if you're doing like paint and you're splattering paint like I was. I got paint all over our floor, which is totally fine, but if you don't have the flooring for that or you don't have the space for that, that's something you may want to consider. Um, we don't have a garage. We converted it into a rental. So when I go to spread out and make a mess on the flooring, I do it in my office, which is a part of our bedroom. I know, it's a lot of additional information, but that's, that's where we're at, so. We're gonna see if this looks all right when I'm done here. I'm trying to think about negative space and highlights and I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this works with the bottom lip here. And brush pens are a lot of fun. Um, they make these in a lot of colors. Just know that the Pentel brush pen, the ink is not light fast. Again, I'm just doing this for a sketchbook. My sketchbooks aren't going to be sitting out in the sunshine. Um, if you're familiar with brush pens or you like brush pens and you're comfy with ink, this may be something you want to try at some point. There also are cartridges you can purchase uh, if you're interested in something like that. You don't have to buy a new pen every single time, especially if your brushes or the brush portion is still in really good condition. I have filled the ink in this one. Um, I've refilled the cartridge with a different ink that I had because I ran out and I am doing a low buy art supply. So I have to stick to my budget, which is a fun challenge into itself. Okay. I think I can see that. All right. I just want, I want things to fall apart here. Okay. Little tiny dot dots. And then, Maybe a hair situation. And I could have this going into, I could work on shape and have this go into another portrait if I want. But because it's kind of two ply with the fold, I can go with extra messy, wet. If I had Sharpie, Sharpie, um, I wouldn't have to worry about the bleed through because this is double folded. So that's kind of one of the benefits of this style of sketchbook. Also, you don't need thread. You don't need to sew. Um, if you suffer from arthritis or carpal tunnel or things with the hands and doing fine stitch work and stuff is not always easy for you. This could be fun. Anyway, I'm getting really messy with it. I can't help it. I go off the page here just a little bit. The black is so dark on this page. I'm so used to doing this um, pen on Tomoe River in my planner that it looks gray as it dries, but on here it looks very black and I'm kind of into it, so. is a portrait <laughs> in my sketchbook. This is fun. Um, now I can incorporate animals. I can go into another. I could go into pieces. I don't have to do a full. Gosh, I'm just in a doodle mood. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> if you enjoy watching someone kind of draw and ramble. 
Yeah, I'll probably make some more of these sketchbooks. This was a lot of fun, and I could totally tailor this for my kids, make some for them. Um, one of our kids is obsessed with purple, so I have some violet paints that would look really, really cool. Uh, that would work. I just, I wanted something two-toned and I couldn't decide between blue or something else. Again, I don't think color has a gender, but if you purchase baby clothing, it would tell you otherwise. I just, I don't know, I like all the colors. And sometimes my mood dictates that I like other ones more, so. <laughs> I've been on a green kick. I've loved blue for forever, which I think blue is the most loved color in the world. Which is fascinating. I think there are more words for the color red in every language. At least that's what I was told in a marketing class. That adds more ink into the barrel. And sometimes I over squeeze. Okay. And now I'm taking a bath with it. So there's always that option. And we can do some sort of upper lip here. I really want to concentrate on the lower lip. We can make it look weird. And then we can do a hair. I love hair in the face. I don't know what it is about hair in the face, but it always, it works for me. We're gonna say this character has awesome hair and fantastic bangs, or fringe, however you wanna define it, so. All right, there is a page in my sketchbook. <laughs> the blue and pink is fun. That's a fun sort of colored substrate to have. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. This is kind of a strange <laughs> video. I don't typically make sketchbooks. Um, I just typically do the art for them. So it's been kind of fun to try something else, try something alternative for, see if other people are interested in that style. It, it, sometimes it's hard to get all the supplies together for every project you see online. And definitely binding can be, while I purchased my kit on Amazon, it is definitely one of the more budget kits. Um, like I said, it is incredibly precise with the hole punching and things lining up. And I'm just not that kind of gal. So <laughs> this is this is great. And when I finish filling this, I will do a sketchbook tour. If you're curious to see how I kept going and what I incorporated and if I decided to do other elements and stuff on the page. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some ideas, maybe some inspiration, uh, maybe to try something on your own or figure out how you can use some, some supplies that have been sitting in your storage for a while. Um, to me, the only supplies that are wasted are supplies that aren't used. So go through, do an inventory. It's really, really helpful and see what supplies you've had the longest out of all your art supplies and figure out ways to incorporate them with other things and sort of shop your own stash and make a sketchbook. <laughs> I hope you have an absolutely wonderful week and I will talk to you later. Bye.